not in the Bible. Now listen, we're beginning a new series this morning and I'm excited, but uh, I do this almost every sermon that I preach to you. I put inside the bulletin an outline for you to, to take notes on and, and, and I know that you don't have to take notes of a sermon to go to heaven. But when you get to heaven, and if they found out that you were a note taker, you go to the fast pass line for all the cool rides. That's in the Bible. Actually, it's not. Have you ever had the experience of realizing that many things that we assume are in the Bible aren't actually there? Well, why is that a problem if you don't realize that? Well, maybe you heard the story of the man that was pulled over for speeding. The officer asked for his driver's license, and he said, well, I, I don't have a valid driver's license. The cop, a cop asked him, well, can I see your vehicle's registration? So, well, I stole this car, and I, I saw something in the glove box when I put my gun in there. The cop jumped back. He says, you've got a gun? He said, well, how else was I going to rob the bank? Money's in the trunk. <laughs> Immediately, the officer calls for backup. Six cars show up. They surround this guy's car. Guns are drawn. They get him out. They put him in handcuffs. The sergeant in charge quickly realizes that this guy does indeed have a dri valid driver's license. The car is not stolen. It does belong to him. There is no gun. There's no money. No bank has been robbed. So, so he asks him, my officer told me that you robbed a bank, you had a gun, you stole this car, and you didn't have a license. The fellow said, well, yeah, I'll bet you he told you I was speeding, too. <laughs> Mark Twain said, it ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so. And there is a lot of wisdom in that, especially when it comes to the Bible. Because many know for sure notions that, that they think are in the Bible that are not in there. For example... What verse is this from? God helps those who help themselves. Where do you find that in the Bible? You don't. You find it in 1 American 1776. Because that's an American notion, but that is not in the Bible. You see, we, we all have these popular sayings and, and cliches that, that fit well on a, a bumper sticker or on a refrigerator magnet, and, and they're given the weight of Scripture without actually being Scripture. In fact, some of them are not just not in the Bible, but they are actually unbiblical, and that can be dangerous. So back in 1999, there was an earthquake in Turkey. It destroyed a village in the mountains. But, but here's the back story. 30 years earlier, the Turkish government had come to that village and they said, you have built your village right on top of a fault line. You, you need to move all of these homes. They did not want to do that. So they convened an assembly and they got out all of the regional maps and they redrew the fault lines. Well, for 30 years, it gave everybody peace and it accelerated real estate values until the earthquake came. Because truth will ultimately and always reveal where the lines actually are. And you can believe something is true, and if it proves not to be true, it can be devastating. So write this down. Sounds true will not set you free. Jesus said, the truth will set you free. Sounds true will not. It doesn't matter how hard you believe it. It doesn't matter how much you believe it. Sincerity alone will not guarantee liberty. You can believe your way into bondage and disaster. 
And many people have done that because they have lived their lives by maps with redrawn lines. So, let me give you some examples. God has a plan for your life. Now, I know that that has to be true because I saw that on a coffee mug in the Christian bookstore. Where is that in the Bible? God will never give you more than you can handle. That has got to be true because I saw that once in a Christian movie. Where does the Bible say that? Everything happens for a reason. I know that's true. That was on Facebook. You can't put it on the internet unless it's true. You see, the danger in these little cliches that we tell people is that when they don't work, people get mad at God for not keeping promises that he never made. What you know that just ain't so will not help you go free. Or to put it another way, It does not follow that what you follow is true just because it sounds true. For example, what about the phrase, follow your heart? We hear that all the time. We give that to counsel people. We we give that to people when they are needing advice and we'll say something similar. We'll say, well, just, just go with your gut. Just Let your conscience be your guide. Or or we'll say, just do whatever your heart is telling you to do. But what book does that verse come from? Well, you find that in Song of Disney, 2016. Because that is not in the Bible. In fact, the Bible says the exact opposite of that. Look at Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Don't depend on what you feel inside is right. You don't trust your heart. You trust the Lord with your heart. Because here is the thing that you have got to know about your heart. The Bible is very consistent in saying this. Write this down. My heart is not a trustworthy moral compass. See, behind the saying, follow your heart, is the belief that your heart will always take you to the right place if you just have the courage to obey it. It is built on a faulty assumption that we have within us the inner moral resources to always choose the good, the the right, the best, the most noble thing. But is that true? Isn't it more true that we have an amazing capacity to underestimate how much we overestimate ourselves? Let me illustrate. There is a a matchmaking website called OkCupid. And that helps people who who want to meet on the internet to be able to connect. And, And you fill out this profile so they can match you with somebody that is like you. And one of the questions is, are you a genius? Two out of every five people say, why yes, I am a genius. Now, I don't know what the percentages are, but but to get into a group like Mensa, you have to be in the 99th percentile of IQ. So so generously, we could say maybe one person in a hundred qualifies as a genius, but two out of every five people think they are. By the way, to break that down a little bit further, 30% of one sex consistently said, I am a genius. Over 50% of the other sex said, yes, I am a genius. You want to guess which sex that was? (laughs) It was the men. Which I could have told you because, well, I'm a genius. (laughs) We underestimate our capacity to overestimate how, how good 
how moral, how wise we really are. And the Bible is much more pessimistic about our inner moral compass. Let me just show you some verses. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? You see, all through the Bible, what you read is God's word saying, the heart is not the solution. The heart is the problem. You're too hard-hearted. Your heart is too prone to wander away from God. Paul says as he reflects on the rebellion of, of all of humanity and how God just turns us over to our own consequences of our rebellion. He says in Romans chapter 1, verse 24, so God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. As a result, they did vile things and degrading things with each other's bodies. Your heart's desire is to do things that are an affront to God. All kinds of damage has been done in this world by people who followed their heart. Many people have been hurt by others who were just following their heart. People wind up in all kinds of bondage. People literally are in prisons today because they just followed their heart. And if you're not convinced yet, let me give you a quote from the wisest man who ever lived. He knew human nature better than anyone else. Jesus said, Matthew 15, verse 19. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. And you know it's true. Every one of us can look back at some point in our life where we wish we could actually have a do-over, something that we regret because we did choose to follow our heart in the matter. And my guess is that everyone here can look back with thanksgiving at some time in your life when you are so glad that you did not follow your heart. You look back now and you're, you're so glad you didn't take that job. You're so glad you, you didn't make that investment. You are so thankful that you did not marry that person that your heart was so infatuated with. You see, our hearts are too easily deceived. We can have total peace in our hearts while we are doing something wrong that we don't even know is wrong. Remember Paul said, when I was throwing Christians in prison, men and women and children, knowing that some of them would die, my conscience was totally clear. It was not bothering my heart to do that. You can do something totally wrong and have total peace in your heart. And we all know that we can convince our hearts that something is right because we just don't want it to be wrong. And if we kept, keep doing it long enough, our heart will become okay with it. So many times, for example, I have spoken with a, a man or a woman that has announced their intention to, to walk out on their marriage, to abandon their children, to go and be with the person that they're having an affair with. They've fallen in love with them, and they'll say, well, preacher, now, I know what you're going to say. The Bible says that this is wrong, but I don't see how God could think it's wrong that I'm just following my heart. The heart cannot be an effective yellow light. And if your conscience is bothering you, you need to stop. You need to step back, and you need to ask why. The heart is not a trustworthy green light. Don't go, go and do something just because your heart says you should. The heart has a voice, but the heart should never be given the final word because the heart is not very discerning. But here is the very good news. The heart can be discipled. Write this down. 
The heart does not need to be followed. The heart needs to be led. You can train your heart where it needs to go. We, we do this all the time. When I was a young boy, I was a picky eater. I did not like to eat anything that grew up out of the ground. But as I got older, I began to eat foods that my heart did not desire. And guess what? Today I, I eat things like asparagus, green beans. I'll even order a salad because I have led my heart. I was never a person to be overly expressive when I was worshiping God. People would hold up their hands in praise uh, during worship, and I would not judge them. I just didn't want to do that. And then one time I remember singing a song about lifting my hands and singing, and I was convicted that I was telling God something that I wasn't actually doing. So I made a decision, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Next time I sing a song about lifting my hands in, in praise to God, I'm not gonna just say it, I'm gonna do it. And guess what happened? As I did it, my heart began to follow. Now I'm just telling you what I did. I'm not putting that on anybody else, I'm simply saying this is a, a true life principle. You can disciple your heart. Jesus gave the most universally true example of this. He's talking about money and, and possessions, and he's, he's asking the question, why do you think God blesses you with money? So that, so that you can fill up your closet with clothes that moths are just going to eat? Did you, did you get given a lot of money so you can fill up your garage with stuff that's just going to rust? Did God want you to just have the, the biggest barn on the block? Jesus said, no, God has entrusted you with resources so that you can invest in things that are eternal, like people. And then he says this in, in the Gospel of Matthew. He also says it in the Gospel of Luke. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus did not say, you put your money where your heart is. Jesus said, your heart goes wherever you put your money. You want to have more passion for the things of, of God? Then invest more of your time. Invest more of your talents. Invest more of your money in eternal things, and your heart is going to follow. Jesus said that. Our hearts are not designed to be gods in which we believe. Our hearts are designed to believe in God. Jesus did not say, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in in your heart. Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. So you don't follow your heart as a way to obey God. You decide to obey God, and your heart will follow. So a couple years back, I, I went and I saw a movie called 42. It's about the great Jackie Robinson first African-American to play Major League Baseball. The two main characters in this movie are Jackie Robinson, played by an actor named Chadwick Boseman, and Branch Rickey, the general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers, played by an actor named Harrison Ford. That's his stage name. We all know he's Han Solo. <laughs> and Rickey is explaining to Robinson... If we, if we do this, if I, if I put you on the field, you can't be just a great player. You need to be a great man. Because everywhere we go, you are going to face unrelenting expressions of racism. And if they curse you and then you curse back, all that people are going to hear is what you said. And if they fight you and you fight back, all people are going to see is what you said did. There's a great moment in that movie where this exchange is taking place. I want you to watch this clip. You want a player who doesn't have the guts to fight back? No. No. I want a player who's got the guts not to fight back. People aren't going to like this. 
They're going to do anything to get you to react. Echo a curse with a curse, and they'll, they'll hear only yours. Follow a blow with a blow, and they'll say the Negro lost his temper, that the Negro does not belong. Your enemy will be out in force, and you cannot meet him on his own low ground. We win with it. Hitting, running, fielding, only that. We win if the world is convinced of two things, that you are a fine gentleman and a great baseball player. Like our savior, you gotta have the guts to turn the other cheek. Can you do it? By the way, you should know that both Ricky and Robinson in real life were very strong, devout Christians. And what Ricky was saying was don't let the heart and, and your instinct take over. Be the man that Jesus is calling you to be. You see, whether you are doing it on purpose or not, you are discipling your heart. So the question of the day is, how are you leading your heart? Does obedience trump your heart? Because the heart does not tell us what is right. Jesus does. And right now, probably every single one of us has at least one area of our lives where Jesus is calling us, but our heart is stopping us. I've been able to see reconciliation where I never thought reconciliation possible because of the reconciling power of Christ. Those things happen because people did not choose to follow their hearts, but because people chose to follow Christ. Follow your heart is not in the Bible. The Bible says I need to follow Jesus with all my heart.